Cliff from the Sunday Drive. Welcome to our shop. Today, we're gonna to be adding some Swiss tracks flooring to our rat bay. So they say you never know how much junk you have until you pull it all out. So earlier today, we pulled all the junk out of this bay, which is the rat bay at our shop. So over on that side, we do all the performance and a lot of the YouTube content that we shoot for you guys. But over here, this is our clean room, so to speak. This is where we do our vinyl wrapping and we were in dire need of a floor. As you can see, the floor has a lot of oil stains. There used to be oil trucks that were parked in here before this was our shop. And there wasn't really a convenient way to clean this up and paint it. So we wanted to go with a overlay um, like Swiss tracks. And this will help us keep the dust down while we're wrapping in here. It'll fall down in between here rather than getting stirred up and kicked up while you're wrapping, which is very bad. You don't want dirt and debris underneath the vinyl wrap or you will not have a good product. So we decided to go with Swiss tracks flooring. Uh, we looked at a few brands, watched a lot of different reviews, and this seems like the best option on the market, uh, especially for the price point. It's not really that bad. We did buy all this. This is not a sponsored video, and we're just really pumped to get this down on the floor. Today, we're gonna be showing you the installation process, how it ships. This is how it ships in little boxes. They're quite manageable. You don't need a forklift or anything to unload it, which is nice. It ships free as well. And we're gonna get this unboxed and show you guys how the installation goes and the finished product. Now, we'll have all the detailed specs for this material down in the description. You can see it's a little flexible, but it's, it's pretty rigid. I'm putting a decent amount of force on this and it's, it's not really bending. And uh, this is strong enough to use quick jacks or floor jacks on. Um, so it should handle very nicely for what we're doing with wrapping. Now Swiss Tracks recommend starting in the front left corner right up here. So we're going to be starting from there, lay everything out. You don't want to cut anything in the beginning. You want to get everything laid out first so you're sure you don't have excess material and then cut after. And as always, we will have affiliate links down in the description so that you can save a little bit of money on Swiss tracks. And it does help us out when you go through those links. So we really appreciate it. And if you have any comments or questions, make sure to leave those down below. Let's get the floor installed. So as you can see, we have black and dark gray tiles. They have any color you can imagine on their website and they can even do custom printed logos and designs for you. Um, they have a lot of designers that are able to help design out your space and give you the exact number of tiles that you need. And we'll have one of those uh, guys linked down in the description that was super helpful for us and can get you a discount. So what we're gonna be doing is mostly a black surface with a dark uh, rectangle in gray. Now you may be wondering what we're going to do on the edges and this is it. So they have a ramped um, or sloped edge piece that'll go where the garage door is for the cars to roll up onto the tracks. Now depending on the Swiss tracks flooring that you're using you do need an expansion gap at the edges. For the rib track style that we have we need a quarter inch. Obviously we are behind a quarter inch right here because of this conduit. Um, after we get things laid out we are going to come back and cut around this conduit, but we, again, wanna get things laid out first and then cut later. And then in the front corner area right here, we have this gap. After we're laid out, we're gonna cut a piece that fits in there. Now these are a loop and pin design, so you can see two of the sides on each of the squares have loops, and then the other two sides have these pins on the bottom that are gonna to connect together. You are going to wanna to start, as we mentioned earlier, in the front left corner here with two flat sides facing that corner. And then as we go along, we're gonna use a rubber mallet to connect these together. Now on the front edge, we have these trim or slope pieces uh, where the cars are gonna enter in. And we also have these for the doorway entrances. Um, and these are just going to connect together as well. So we're gonna first just lay out our first row going across to get an idea of where we're at with things. So you're just gonna lay it together and just lightly tap it together with the mallet. It goes together very easily. Now I'm gonna do all the trim pieces after we're fully laid out. Just wanted to demonstrate how those go up front there. In researching for this floor, I did find several people that commented that these floor tiles go together easier and come apart nicer than some of the competing brands which was one of the reasons we decided to go with this. So as I was going, I realized I put these two in flipped, um, but what I wanna show you is how easy these come apart. Look at that. And some of the brands they were saying were really took a lot of effort to get apart, and I didn't want something that was gonna be stuck permanently together that we could never adjust. I'm gonna put this one in here so I'm just sure I'm spaced out enough from the garage door here. So Leo and I are gonna get the first three rows laid out here, and that's gonna give us 
a backbone or some rigidity so that we can make sure the rest of the floor is going in straight. You don't want to assume that your walls are straight. They may not be. And then we're going to have to cut that tile there. And now we're going to start our first gray section. So we're going to have a two tile wide gray stripe in a rectangular pattern in line with the garage door. All right, so we have our first three rows laid out and we're measuring from the front wall in this corner as well as the front wall where we started. Um, and it's the same distance. Uh, what helped us out is we went off of the garage door rails right there. So you can see we have our trim in. And right now we're tight to the garage door rails. We're all gonna have to pull that back a little bit, but that'll help us keep ourselves straight as we go back into the room. And we've put some tires on the first row here to kind of help hold it in place as well so we don't have it shifting around at all. At this point, we can continue running the whole pieces down into the back of the room. And then again, at the very end, we are gonna cut. Wait until the end to cut because things can shift and move around and you don't wanna have to cut something and then realize that the position changed a little bit and now it's not the right size. So we have some conduit here. We have a couple options. We could either run this inch and a quarter gap all the way down the full length of the room, but I would like the flooring in a little bit tighter to the wall. So we're gonna go a little bit wide on each side and then we're gonna see, so we're in an inch and a quarter. So we're gonna go back that much and then mark that right there. You could use a marker or something too. All right, so we had some more conduit midway down the wall and we decided just to go around it. So again, saving cuts till the end. Um, the nice thing is that these tiles do pick up very easy compared to some of the other brands. So we've just marked this out, gonna cut it, and then we'll slip this piece in and show you how we do that. All right, so that was all the easy cuts done. Now what we need to do is go around the perimeter and cut the larger tiles to fill in this side. Um, we got lucky, the end lined up perfectly on the back wall and it also lined up nicely with the shelf right here, which is where we were planning to stop it anyway. So we just got to cut around the back HVAC right there and around the right side of the room. All right, so we got our tiles here. Now we can do a lot of straight cuts. So measure the wall, subtract a quarter inch because you need a little bit of float on the end. And we're gonna mark these, just using a black Sharpie. And I'm gonna cut the line away so you won't see it when you're done. Now don't discard this piece because this could be used on the opposite side of tiles in the future. None of ours are that width, unfortunately. Now you'll notice that when you cut, you get all this debris because the metal or the plastic gets heated up, but this will peel right away. And you can just peel all of that off and have a nice clean top edge. We had this one piece right here um, where in order to fill this, we would have to cut a entire piece just for this little corner. However, there's nothing gonna be moving right here. So we took another piece, scrap piece from another cut and it's not gonna clip in on this side like it should, but it'll click in right there and that's not gonna be a problem. And it saves you from cutting up an entire piece. So if you have some small corners like that, you might get away with using a scrap piece where it's not clipped in on the one part, but it'll never cause you a problem. All right, so the floor is 95% done. We just have a few more cuts to make. We have this wall completely done. Um, just a few small 
places to finish up, but the floor is to a point where you can see the pattern. So you can see we have our dark gray uh, rectangle and everything else in the black and absolutely love how this turned out. And one of the nice benefits about this floor, uh, because we don't know if we'll be in this building forever, we might eventually move to a bigger shop, we can pick this floor up and take it with us. And that was one of the huge advantages over doing an epoxy floor, which may have cost the same amount or more potentially with all the oil stains that were on the floor to get that to adhere properly. But absolutely love how this turned out. And as I said earlier in the video, this will keep the dust down in this area. If we wet it down before a wrap job, it'll all fall down inside and we can just pull this out every so often, clean underneath and it just pops back together. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. We will make sure we do an update on this floor in a year, one to two years, so you guys can see how it's holding up and what our impressions are after using it for that amount of time. And as I mentioned, we will have a contact four Swiss tracks down in the description. If you go through them, they will give you a discounted price over the internet price, so make sure to check that out. And if you have any questions about how we installed this, be sure to shoot us a message or leave a comment. And we look forward to talking to you guys in the next video.